All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of By Accident or Design, a small snackable series that talks about honest moments about business, marketing, sales, mistakes, and all the wow moments in between. Today, I have a special guest with me, Ev Farazard, who is one of, well, a former VizMe person or is still kind of VizMe, but you were previously working at VizMe. You helped to increase VizMe from zero to almost 19 plus million active users, as well as you're working at Respondo, which is a link building platform or a platform that helps with link building and outreach so that you can help companies to increase their organic search. So how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Nice. Okay. So first things first, just to touch on what I mentioned. So you were working at VizMe first full-time in marketing in 2017, and you know you really helped to just grow, do do that growth. So I want to ask you, what were one of some, some of the things that you like implemented that helped to help you to see that growth? That isn't like the generic, like you got to know your audience and you got to know this, like we kind of already know that in a sense, but what were some of the principalities that you hammered down on? If you could share like two or three with our audience, that'd be pretty good. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So uh, when I joined Vizme, we, I was, practically the first marketing hire. We didn't have anybody in the marketing department at the time yet. And uh, it was a very product focused company at the time, which is great. The product was awesome, but obviously people didn't know about us. So uh, I was tasked with figuring out a, a customer acquisition strategy for Vizme so that I would continuously bring us customers uh, without having to spend a lot of cash because we're a bootstrap company up to this day. And obviously resources are always limited when you're, you know, uh, it's kind of like building a car as you're driving it. <laughs> and so uh, basically, you know, we, we set out a few different strategies to experiment with. And, um, and I'm happy to dig a little deeper into that. But what we ended up with was basically kind of going back to our customer journey and understanding how our ideal customer base finds solutions like ours. And it turns out that Google was the answer. So we basically invested um, all of our resources, almost marketing resources on our SEO strategy and content strategy. So we hired uh, smart, awesome writers like yourself, Wick, and um, basically put out pieces of content. And at the beginning, it was completely crickets. <laughs> and, you know, we had zero traffic. And so uh, what we basically figured out over time was that uh, the way these search engines um, prioritize content pieces is based on the level of authority, and that's determined by how popular you are. So uh, we basically learned very quickly that we had to build relationships with other relevant authoritative sources in our space, and that kind of led to the creation of Respond. So that's kind of the story there in, an, in a nutshell. So partnership played a big role, and I think a lot of people kind of overlook or see partnership as like um, the back seat of everything or more of like a vanity metric that it provides. But partnership also allows you like, obviously when you're working in like a digital space, partnership is as important as if you were in a physical space with a business. So how did you build some of those partnerships along the way? So uh, when it comes to partnership, I have to make a clear distinction. There's different variations of uh, definitions you can come up with. And the way we basically uh, found that works best what, for us in, in particular was that um, basically getting other people to talk about us. And that sends a signal to these search engines that um, so not only we get exposure to the audience, but also and uh, now Google is looking at us as a much more authoritative resource. So that helps our pages, our landing pages and content pieces get a higher rankings and basically get traffic to our website. So those partnerships um, were made through a variety of different techniques and strategies. Um, one of the very simple ones is podcast outreach, right? So you basically go on as a guest on other people's podcasts, uh, similar to what I'm doing right now. And they basically package that up, put it into a content piece, mention your website in the show notes, and that sends a, sends a signal to these search engines that, hey, if Vizme and Vic are talking about Farzad and their company, Respana, that's a vote of popularity. It means that you're vouching for our credibility. And that that helps uh, basically getting, and over time, you know, as you accumulate these things, uh, that basically increases what we call your domain authority. So a partnership in the sense that is um, basically uh, working with other creators and 
other businesses in the space to create pieces of content, either collaboratively or you basically incentivize them to work with you in several different ways. Um, and that that basically uh, were my definition of partnership land. And the several different ways could be a webinar, it could be a newsletter exchange, it could be link building with each other, um, video content, or even having a conference as well. Those are some. Right. Uh, yeah, those are some good ideas. So exactly. I would say now. You're at Responda now, and you've been at Responda for a while. What are some of the, or do you find that there is a different way that you have to market products? Because you've experienced, you know, Visme, which is an all-in-one content creation tool, and now you're at a another type of SaaS tool, which is just really just um, outreach and like building two different purposes. Obviously, they these two businesses want to grow. What are some of the similarities and differences that you see in the marketing that you have to do? So the way our customers find solutions like Visme and Respond are quite similar in a way, even though they're completely different products. So Vic, let's say you didn't know about Visme or Respond and you create pieces of content. You want to, um, you know, look for basically different ways on how you can promote your or build backlinks to your content pieces or, or promote your content. What's the first thing you do in your research process to find a solution? And uh, that would be. I neither go on. Google or YouTube. Exactly. So you use a search engine uh, and basically normally step one is Google and you Google, okay, what are some of the best ways or what are some of the best link building tools or how do I promote my content pieces, right? And so there, there are two things that's happening here. One, you're aware of the problem that we solve, right? So for Visme, everybody's aware that they need to create a presentation or they need to create an infographic or in, in case of Respana, they need to promote their content pieces, they need to build backlinks to get their organic traffic. Two, uh, you're, you're looking for it through Google and or YouTube, so through these search engines. Um, so it, it's easy to kind of narrow the focus down and kind of generalize this to all sorts of businesses. But as a matter of fact, it's a very small subset of companies that sell their products in this way. Uh, and that is uh, that customers are aware of the problem and are looking for them on Google. So those two questions are, are key to ask before you invest any sort of resources when it comes to SEO in general. And so uh, both at Responda and Visme, that's the number one focus. And that's what's bringing the majority of the customers to our website is, is us uh, placing ourselves in places where they're looking for a solution or a product like ours. So we show up organically versus us having to chase after customers uh, or uh, you know, show up in ads, uh, intrusive in intrusive ways, uh, which is a very expensive play. Nice. And what are the differences? And I ask because usually when um, we're having conversations with marketers, they kind of sometimes we kind of work with one type of product for a very long time. And so you you work with multiple products along the way. Mm -hmm. Could you share like one difference where you had to kind of like fine tune your approach? Um, when working in Responda or trying to market Responda differently as to other products or services that you've marketed in the past? So so let, let's go through a few examples. I think that would be more helpful. So let's say you, you run a lifestyle business, like you sell t-shirts and hoodies, right? With cool designs. How Nobody's Googling t-shirts from, I mean, there are people that are Googling, but that's, nor, that's not the norm on how people acquire this product, right? So they go on either Nordstrom or some other shopping mall. And so retail is probably your best bet or uh, basically TikTok ads, uh, get some inf uh, Instagram models to wear your clothes, right? So that, that acquisition process, I know nothing about e-commerce, but the acquisition process is completely different when it comes mm -hmm. to, for example, software. Uh, on the other end of the spectrum, say you sell ex very expensive, uh, like hospital equipment or- mm -hmm. or, or luxury uh, high-end high -end clothes or right. tools. Yeah, not necessarily clothes, but but say, for example, you sell an enterprise grade software like that you sell to, for example, SAP or Salesforce uh, exclusively, like the Fortune good, yeah. 500, right? And so uh, that sales process, nobody's, for example, if I sell an MRI machine that costs like $2 million, no hospital administrator is sitting on their desk and typing buy MRI machine, right? That's just ridiculous. So the, the sales process for that looks, so the way you would want to acquire customers in that market is to hire salespeople uh, to go door to door, start selling, right? Cold outreach. Uh, go to conferences. Go to conferences, trade shows, exactly. So that, that 
the marketing strategy is entirely reliant on the target market and also the type of product that you're selling. So it's almost idiotic to try to generalize this SEO and content approach to all sorts of businesses. Um, it's all basically depends on how your customers find you. So uh, that's, again, going back to those two questions, if, if you answered yes to those two questions, then obviously uh, it's, it, 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 it's a no brainer. Uh, they all tie back. It kind of all works in sync with each other. OK, right. Um, I want to actually ask you one really important question, and I get this question a lot from people who are marketers who are not that in depth when it comes to link building and just growing their outreach is that mm -hmm. they feel intimidated by the word just as they feel intimidated by the word SEO, they feel intimidated by the word link building. And right. so how does Responda kind of help people to lower that intimidation or lower the feeling of, okay, this is going to feel like it's like a lot of work. I need to have like a master's in link building in order to get this. So how does Responda kind of fix that problem or help to solve the issue without having the consumer feel overwhelmed? Right. So first of all, there's so much negative connotation uh, that's associated with the work link building just because there's so much malpractice done in the space. Um, I, I kind of look at it because it's somewhat new and, and a lot of marketers don't really know what they're doing so that they kind of resort to spamming. And that's why it kind of carries a bad rap. I kind of look at it like doing sales in the back, like back in like early 2000s where it's like it was somewhat <laughs> new at the time, right? And so they were just spamming people like with these email uh, newsletter type emails and like uh, also like postcards and and door to door door knocking. And so those type of approaches that have now been mainly antiquated um, kind of evolved over time. Now it's a much more sophisticated way of doing outreach and, and sales teams uh, the way to operate. And, and the same thing I'm, I'm starting to notice in the link building space is that people look at it as intimidating icky thing to do just simply because other people have done it in a wrong way. And what at a matter of at, at the end of the day, what it means is building relationships with relevant authoritative publications in your space, I something that. that any business in that's doing uh, that cares about their uh, search engine optimization or creates any sort of content that's, uh, you know, purposefully built to be ranked in search results needs to do it's not a it's not a nice to nice to have it's not something that um you know a lot of businesses that are like oh we don't do any sort of link building you are uh <laughs> in in ways that you don't know that you are because that's not what it's called right so th there's a variety of different strategies you can implement um uh, like for example at visme we have a large average team and what they do is that when we create a linkable asset meaning you create a piece of content that carries some sort of weight. That's not just a you know repurpose piece of that that you took from the internet or you asked ChatGPT to write, right? So, for example, it's some sort of original research, some sort of uh, you know uh, custom design templates, uh, stuff that is yet basically unique, and 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 certain segments of the market or certain publications want to talk about it. It's not something that you go and take from them. It's something that you collaborate with them on. And so, say for example. Uh, like a really cool example that I can't, uh, that I always mention at Visme in particular was uh, back in the day, I think it was like a few years ago. Um, one of the uh, PR campaigns that I helped run was, have you watched uh, Game of Thrones, Vic? Uh, of course, love Game of Thrones, watching awesome. House of Dragons now. That's right. Yeah. So before the last season of Game of Thrones came out, everyone was freaking out. They were like, okay, who's going to win the Game of Thrones? So what we did was to go on one of these betting sites and took the data and we're like, all right, let's visualize some um, basically stats on who people are betting on to win the Game of Thrones. And we actually guessed that person. Well, people were guessing it wrong. They, they all thought that uh, I think Jon Snow was going to win. And we're not going to spoil it for people who haven't watched it. But um, but that, what we did then is to, Vesme has a big data visualization tool, a really cool charts and graphs and they, anybody can put together. So we put them together in one page and then reached out to all the journalists that recently covered uh, Game of Thrones. We're like, hey, uh, you know, just talked about, uh, you know, Game of Thrones and, and, and we just put together some charts on what people think who's going to win. And that resulted in like 60 different publications mentioning us and, 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 and talking about us and, and include these graphics in their, in their post. So, uh, it, also ultimately you're selling to people. 
And these are right. some of the things that people are interested. It doesn't have to be clear cut, like buy my product. Sometimes it can be something that's, you know, either popular or trending, but in a way that feels engaging and feels right. human. Yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, that's just one out of a gazillion different strategies you could run. And not a big one is the listicle strategy where what, what other bloggers have written on, what are some of the best presentation tools and infographic tools. And if you haven't mentioned VizMe, your article is incomplete. <laughs> so, Very true. Or at least we would like to think so. So we reached out to you. We're like, hey, it seems like you missed VizMe. Let us let you an ac- get you an account on the house for you to go and play with and, and let you be the judge of figuring out if it's worth being up there. And some bloggers, they monetize their blog by referral. So we invite them to join our affiliate program. Uh, so again, it's a mutually beneficial collaboration that happens and there's far beyond what people would look at as spamming. Uh, so what responded does just to facilitate these sort of strategies under one roof. So you don't have to manually go through, find these people, who's the right person, who's to get, who, what's the best email address, uh, what's their LinkedIn. Uh, and also what do we say to them? How do we personalize it? So all of that is kind of done under one roof. So you can kind of breeze through one strategy within a few minutes instead of hours. Nice. So instead of having multiple Google Docs all over the place, Excel sheets, you're centralizing your link building. And and I've done some link building in the past. And I can say, um, you know, it's not as hard once you start building really good relationships with really good people. And it's a community in its sense there. And like all communities, there's, you know, um, people who are of the good of the community, of the bad of the community. But there are more good in that community than most people think when it comes to that. Now, I want to ask you a few personal questions. It's still time to not too personal. Um, but what are what's two habits that you practice on a regular basis that helps you to keep on top of your game as a marketer? Um, OK, so a few things. So I, I use the app Todoist. And it's a it's it's something I've been trying to get Vizme CEO Paymon on it, and he <laughs> refuses. He he likes to use his sticky notes. Uh, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> very old school. Uh, right, but I, I it helps me prioritize my day, and because I can you know schedule things for later on, and it's a free app, and anybody can download. So that's something that really helps me to kind of have an understanding of what I would like to accomplish, and I normally just include one thing for every right. day. So it's never like a list of items. Obviously, most days I break that rule. But uh, <laughs> but I, when I'm scheduling tasks for the week, I normally put one thing for each day that I like to accomplish. And I want to hold myself accountable to get that done. So that that's, that's one thing uh, that's been very helpful. Nice. I try to do three things. I usually get through one or two, but, you know, I, I feel you on that. Uh, so what's another thing that you do that kind of helps you to keep on top of everything? Um, well, aside from productivity tools, I'd say as far as marketing goes in general, um, I like to kind of uh, keep an open conversation with our customers. And that's something that a lot of people kind of shy away from, especially, you know, founders or, you know, if you're in marketing, you're not a salesperson. And so you don't need to be engaging with customers. I love chatting with our customers up to the point that people get suspicious. They're like, how big is your company? Why why am I talking to the founder on this call? <laughs> and I, I love that because it basically... The, just the words that they say it defines mm-hmm. our messaging and, and the way we market our products. And uh, just having that face-to-face conversation with our customers, whether it be on a demo call or a strategy call, um, I like to jump in at, and I do those almost on a daily basis uh, to kind of be aware of what the trends are, what the requirements are, what people are looking for. And there's no systems or processes built behind that. It's more so a matter of if something is so important that gets repetitive, you intrinsically know exactly what those are and that also helps us build the roadmap for the product that's good i I saw earlier on ahref that when they hire someone they let them work in customer service for two or three months before they start their actual role so that they get a hand on it so they're aware of certain systems and so i also feel like you're the type of person who is also um What's the phrase? Uh, you're aware of what's going on around you as well. You may not be like as in depth, but you're aware of all the different pieces and parts of your departments and the people that you work with to help to make sure that whatever you do in your marketing efforts for Responda is kind of connected in one, right? Right. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. But yeah, so that's that's just a reality. It's not an option. It's a requirement <laughs> as a startup, especially a smaller startup. But 
when companies grow, obviously can't be one person involved in everything. So that's, that's the stage that FISME is at. So thankfully it's been a, a rocket ship uh, in the past few years and, and it's great. I mean, it's, these are, um, it's just a natural progression of any company, but, uh, when, when the baby is still, you know, a toddler, you gotta keep taking care of it and, and, you know, be on top of things. That's right. Can't leave it out in the wilderness. Um, <laughs> so what's the best and worst advice that you've ever gotten when it comes to just marketing your profession, what, whatever it may be that you're just like, what, like, what's the worst advice you've ever gotten? Well, let's start with the best. Best advice was actually from Paymon. And I said this on another podcast and, and, and that good things take time. And I'm personally a very impatient person. I like to kind of do things and like, tell me if it works or not. And then if not, then I'm going to focus on something else. And uh, so it, it's something that obviously I had to kind of contain and, and understand that, you know, there's me now that is getting close to 4 million monthly traffic happen over a span of 10 years, not <laughs> you know, a decade almost uh, uh, of work. And it, it's basically something that consistently kind of beats uh, all the trends, all the fads and, and having that sort of mindset when it comes to doing things and committing to things to doing them long term and giving them a first shot. And also obviously balancing that with, um, you know, killing projects that obviously are a waste of time and doesn't really move the needle. So that that's I would say the best best advice I've got. Worst advice, um, well, that may be not applicable to other folks, uh, but you know I grew up in a oh, Persian well, family, know. right? Yeah, so I I grew up in a Persian family, and and you know most foreign parents, uh, you either got to be a doctor, or engineer, or something, oh, yeah. a lawyer to, <laughs> to be uh, considered successful. So since I was young, my parents were like, "Oh, you're so smart, you should be a doctor." So when I was 18, I was picking a major and I was like, I'm so smart. I should be a doctor. <laughs> I've been told that for the past 17 years. Uh, so and, and I ended up hating it, even though, you know, it was, it was something that was I was good at. You know, I'd like biology as a concept, but not necessarily something I wanted to do as a career. So, yeah, that, that hopefully I caught it early and, and changed path. But, yeah, a lot of people kind of my friends uh, went down that path and now after they are an actual doctor, mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't really like it. And so I'm, I'm glad that, you know, I caught the hour. Yeah, I totally understand that. My mom was like, you should be an engineer. And I was like, okay, I'll be an engineer. And after <laughs> he was like, I do not like this. I'm, I'm glad that I found marketing. It's the best well, thing ever. You're, you're an excellent content marketer. I've seen your work and, and you're definitely down the right path. Thank you. It's not about me. It's about you today. But. <laughs> <laughs> so one last question before we wrap up, I want to know where can people find you? What do you or Responda have coming up next? This is your plug session free on filtered plug for Responda or for yourself. Sure. So our, uh, we put out a lot of free educational material on our website. So Responda.com, that R-E-S-P-O-N-A.com. A lot of people call it Responda. We don't own that domain. It's Responda without the D. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, if folks want to connect with me on LinkedIn, that's probably the best way. Uh, Farzad Rashidi. Aren't a whole lot of us out there. It's a very weird foreign name. <laughs> so that helps me kind of stand out. So yes, that that's the best place to, to connect with me. Nice. All right. And thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for all of the, you know, the advice that you shared. Um, thank you for some of the strategies and insights that you've given to us. And you've definitely put some skin in the game. So guys, if you want to start implementing these, feel free to just learn more about what he's doing on, they can find you on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is good. Yeah. And just go from there. So thank you so much. And I will see you guys on our next episode of By Accident or Design.